The Poirot mystery series began with Captain Hastings cast in the role of Dr. Watson, the detective's assistant and sometimes narrator. After Hastings more or less retired from the series, Poirot went through a slew of Watsons, Dr. Shepard, Colonel Race, Ariadne Oliver, Mr. Satterthwaite from the Harley Quinn stories, Inspector Jap, although he's more analogous to Inspector Lestrade, and others. The one I'd like to highlight today is Amy Leatherin, who appeared in one novel, Murder in Mesopotamia. Murder in Mesopotamia was published in 1936 and was the twelfth novel to feature Hercule Poirot. It was adapted for the TV series Agatha Christie's Poirot in 2002, starring David Suchet. I've been looking forward to comparing this film to the book it was based on. As always, spoiler warning for book and film. Amy Leatherin, our first-person narrator, is a nurse working in Iraq. She's hired to attend on the wife of the leader of an archaeological dig, Louise Leidner. Right away, Amy is conscious of an acute tension and strain among the group, which consists of Eric Leidner, the head archaeologist, his partners, Ann Johnson and Richard Carey, Father Lavigny, Mr. and Mrs. Mercado, David Emmett, Carl Ryder, and Bill Coleman. There's also Dr. Riley, a local physician, and his daughter, Sheila. As Amy gets to know everyone, she finds an almost universal dislike for Louise Leidner. Louise herself is living in mortal terror, and after some strange noises in the night, she decides to confide in her nurse. She was briefly married a long time ago to a man, Frederick Bosner, who turned out to be a spy for the Germans. Louise was the one who reported him. Official records claim Bosner died in a train wreck, but for years Louise has been receiving threatening letters from him, warning that if she ever married again, he'd kill her. These letters persisted even after she married Eric, who, it's hinted, suspects Louise of writing the letters herself for attention. Just a week ago, Louise found a new letter lying on a table. I have arrived. The very next day, Louise Leidner's fears come true. She's killed in her bedroom and no strangers had entered the compound. The killer is someone in the expedition. The film starts off immediately with two drastic changes to the story. First, we have the murder of an Iraqi man. Second, as you might have noticed, Poirot did not appear in the book prior to Louise's death. Here, he and Hastings are present from the beginning. Poirot because of a telegram from his old flame, Countess Vera Rosikoff, and Hastings because Bill Coleman has been made into his nephew. David Emmett, Carl Ryder, and Dr. Riley are all left out, and Sheila is now the daughter of the local police captain. Apart from these, the biggest change to the plot in the first act is that Louise's backstory has been altered. A nighttime incident in which a dead face appeared at her window is moved to the present, the same time as the noises in the Antica room, prompting Louise to confide in Poirot. Also, And then there was silence for years. I met Eric, and we got engaged. Nothing. We married. Nothing. The only letter she's received lately is the I have arrived. This might not seem like a big deal for now, but I'll be coming back to it later. As a character, Louise herself has also been altered. In the book, she was likable, at least to Amy, while in the film, she stuck up. I should have thought you would have known by now that dinner is at 8 o'clock, Mr. Carey. I'm sorry, Mrs. Leidner. We finished our soup, I'm afraid. The group's tension from the book is still present, but its significance is eclipsed by the added murder. Mr. Mercado adds further to the tension by his overly nervous behavior. The reason for his nervousness is hinted at when a man attacks him, swearing to avenge his brother. Mrs. Mercado is also very different from her book counterpart. She's been aged up at least ten years, and instead of being obsessed and all mean girl toward Louise, all we ever see her doing is trying to keep her husband calm. The other characters are pretty much book accurate, although it's hard to tell with Amy because she's... barely there. As he happens to be passing through on his way home from a situation in Syria, Poirot is asked to consult on the case. Amy's first impression of him like most people's, is that he's completely ridiculous. Instead of being offended, Poirot is amused. He selects her as his assistant because of her intelligence and keen observation, and probably also because he wants to show off to her. Bit by bit, he wins her respect. Amy starts to think of him as a doctor in charge of an operation, and she his nurse. I think they make a good team. 
Next to Mrs. Oliver, Amy is my favorite assistant at Poirot's. Yes, I like Hastings, too, but personally, I like Hugh Fraser's Hastings better than I like Book Hastings. Together, Amy and Poirot make some interesting discoveries. Mr. Mercado is revealed to be a drug addict. The mask used to frighten Louise is found at the back of a shelf. Carrie admits he hated Louise, but refuses to say why. Miss Johnson says she heard Louise cry out, but through experimentation, Poirot and Amy determined that she couldn't have heard anything unless Louise's window was open. Poirot suggests that one of the expedition staff might really be Bosner, but that would limit the suspects to men of a certain age. However, Bosner had a younger brother, who might have been the letter writer all along, even if Frederick had really died. This widens the field of possibilities, though Amy suspects Miss Johnson of writing the letters when she catches her burning a piece of paper with the same handwriting. Amy finds Miss Johnson's behavior growing more and more peculiar, particularly when she comes across the woman on the roof. Miss Johnson says she's discovered a way someone could have come in from outside, but won't say how. As far as Amy can tell, it's impossible, but apparently she's wrong. For that night, someone silences Miss Johnson by poisoning her with hydrochloric acid. As Amy tries to save her, Miss Johnson manages to get one word out. Poirot consoles Amy, who repeats to him what Miss Johnson said. As the sun rises, Poirot has an epiphany. What a fool that I have been, when the truth, it is so clear. So simple. Up to a point, the film gives us the same set of events with a few alterations. First of all... She must have murdered Mrs. Leidner. Amy never suspected Miss Johnson of being the killer, only the letter writer. Mrs. Leidner had a nice, kind way of being interested in people. This was stated in the book, but it doesn't fit with what we see of her in the film. I suggest the letters, they are genuine. That they are written by William Bosner, the young brother-in-law of Madame Leidner, and that actually he is one of the staff of the expedition. Until later in the film, they leave out the possibility of Frederick Bosner being here in disguise. As for the characters, they each receive a faithful representation. Carrie is angsty, Sheila's vitriolic, Father Lavigny is cryptic, and Bill's a sweet idiot. But like Amy, their screen time is so reduced that you hardly feel their presence. This is in part due to the addition, late in the story, of Mr. Mercado's suicide, resolving this subplot. So where does this put your investigation now, Mr. Poirot? I do not know that it adds to it, nor that it takes away from it, Monsieur Corman. Personally, I feel it's a shame to lose out on the character development, as Agatha Christie's suspects tend to be intriguing and engaging. Perhaps the most vivacious character from the book is Mrs. Mercado, who turns from high school-style bullying to crocodile tears following the murder. In the film, the most she ever does is mourn her suicidal husband, changing her from the most interesting suspect to... nothing but a source of melodrama, and no longer a suspect at all. You might have noticed I said that the character development is crowded out in part by Mercado's suicide. There's another film-only element that crowds it out, but I'm going to wait a bit before discussing that. The book gives us a solution that some critics understandably find difficult to swallow. The murderer is Louise's second husband, Eric Leidner, who is also her first husband, Frederick Bosner. Bosner was obsessively in love with Louise, so, having assumed the identity of Leidner, he married her again. But when she and Richard Carey fell in love, Leidner decided he couldn't let another man have her. This was the cause of the tension among the expedition. Its leader was contemplating murder. He was the one who tapped on her window with the mask at night, so that when he did it in the daytime, she would stick her head out the window. That way, he could kill her without leaving the roof, giving himself the perfect alibi. This is what Miss Johnson had figured out. She had already discovered he was the letter writer. When she realized he was also the murderer, she was too shocked and upset to tell anyone. When she was dying, she said, window, to try to indicate how Louise had been killed. At the very end of the book, it turns out this is a prequel to Murder on the Orient Express. I saw this film before I read the book, and, setting suspension of disbelief aside, I figured out Leidner was the murderer way before the ending, mostly due to some very odd choices on the part of the screenwriter. 
In the film, when Louise marries Eric, unlike all the other times she's gotten close to any man, she receives no threatening letters. This is a huge hint, as it shows Bosner is okay with Louise marrying Eric, because he is Eric. In the book, Bosner himself prevents the solution from being given away like this by continuing to send threats following the marriage. So why did the film do away with them? Later in the book, it turns out Leiner engaged a nurse for his wife not only to support the lie that he suspected Louise of writing the letters to herself, but also as an expert witness to establish she'd been dead an hour before she was found, in order to make sure no one accused him of killing his wife when he went to her room and discovered her body. Oh my god! Louise! Oh, Louise! In the film, Amy never gives the time of death, so even though it's misleading to think Leidner committed the murder then, it still gives away the killer's identity. And then finally, when Miss Johnson discloses her discovery that will obviously bring about her death, they show us Leidner standing nearby, probably having overheard. Taking a step back, though, these are all just my personal hang-ups. The real problem with this adaptation is that too much has been added to the story for it to breathe, so to speak. But I'm not just talking about the additional murder and suicide. The biggest film-only element taking up too much space, just hear me out, is Poirot. By including him in more of the story, with Hastings in tow, we lose so much of the plot and character development that give this story its identity, primarily our main character, Amy. So much time is given to comic relief scenes that, in my opinion, fall flat, such as Poirot chasing mosquitoes and paying the Countess's bills. Do not speak, Hastings. So, here's my idea, for what it's worth. Someday, a really good filmmaker... No. Better. A good filmmaker should adapt this story again, with one alteration. Leave out Poirot. It's not sacrilege. Christie herself took Poirot out of the story four times when adapting his novels into stage plays. This novel is great with him in it, but the best way to tell this story on screen is to let the true protagonist shine. Poirot describes Amy Leatherin as energetic, with a brisk, inquisitive mind. She deserves a proper place among Agatha Christie detectives, even if this is her only story. Let her solve this mystery herself without any extra tragic deaths added in, and this could be one of the greatest theatrical Christies ever. I dare someone to try it.